the DJ Optimo actually posted this interesting series of tweets I forgot to mention in the last podcast regarding Watergate's closure. So as you know, one of the legendary clubs in Berlin, Watergate, unfortunately is closing at the end of the year. The owners of Watergate are citing the rising energy costs, rising rents and whatnot for the reason why they have to close. Um, people like myself who've been to Watergate, who kind of have read between the lines, are probably saying it's probably a lot more than just that. It's probably the way that they've probably neglected to kind of keep up with the times to maybe introduce a bit more fresh blood, new talent into the club, into the scene, encourage different collectives to do parties, welcome different types of people, change maybe the culture around the club and the vibe and the bouncers and how they select and door pick, blah, 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 blah. A lot of those issues, I think, have kind of now come to a head and they finally had to pay the price for all those years of neglect. It kind of, in my opinion, the closing of Watergate kind of reminds me a little bit of Fabric, a little bit of how Fabric sort of like fucked up, you know? So, in my opinion, going on with that, um, read between lines, I was searching on Twitter and I randomly jumbled, stumbled across Optimo's tweet regarding his experience at Watergate. And you know, Optimo's a fucking legend, great productions, great DJ. And he has some very interesting things to say about Watergate. This is Optimo on Twitter um, at G -day, G -G JD Twitch. Sorry. So let's continue. Um, it says, I see Watergate in Berlin closing. We played there one time back when minimal was a religion in Berlin and straying from the orthodoxy was heresy. Before we went on the main room was completely utterly packed. A very high percentage of people were wearing sunglasses. I decided to start our set with Love Can't Turn Around by Farley, Jack Master Funk, which is a fucking legendary set track, right? Love Can't Turn Around, oh, fucking amazing. Within seconds, people were going absolutely mental, not in a good way. People were screaming, no vocals, no vocals. Several people clearly did, did the throat slitching gesture at me, which is funny because I remember this being a thing. And I don't think it's a thing anymore, but I remember back in the day when I first was going to Bergheim, you would see people like boo in a crowd if somebody played a, a vocal. Now it's kind of different. I feel like a, the Bergheim booking is a little bit more uh, fluid. I feel like a lot of, there's sometimes what you would describe as a quote-unquote house DJ will be playing in Bergheim. Um, I think a good example of that is someone like a DJ Harvey. When I saw DJ Harvey play, he didn't play in Panorama Bar where he probably would expect him to play. He played on Bergheim main room floor. So I think nowadays the Bergheim booking is a bit more fluid and they're a bit more open-minded and they kind of let people experiment and shit. But I remember back in the day when I used to go, like legit, like if somebody on the Bergheim main room floor played like a vocal track, even if it was a techno track with like vocals on it, people would like legitimately like leave the dance floor like it's so wild honestly berlin is like another place like they don't fuck with that shit they want their oots 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 they don't want any vocals nothing but now it's obviously kind of changed especially if you go there now there's people fucking singing along to bass lines a bit different now but back in the day that was actually a thing so this for sure 100 percent you know can co-sign um what optimo is saying here continuing on <clears throat> By the time I had mixed the next record, 90% of the audience had left the room. About 10 minutes later, the night manager came up and said he was going to close the room. We were meant to play for another three hours. We weren't even, we, were, we weren't ever invited back. I'm extremely not nostalgic for that era, even though I actually adored lots of minimal records, um, at least initially, I'm still sad to hear it's closing. Could you imagine being a professional DJ? Because it's happened to me before, right? At my kind of low level, playing at bars and clubs level, right? Where you you get booked to play somewhere and <laughs> and it's not going well or the bar manager or whoever's not happy with what you're playing. Either way, either you're not, go, either you're not doing a good job or they're not happy with the job you're doing. It doesn't matter which one. And then they say, hey, or they, they, or they just turn off your fucking shit, right? That, that could be hard, really brutal, to take, especially when they pay you. I think it feels worse when they pay you because it's like, yeah, look, take your money, go. Like, you've played for an hour, we don't want this anymore, fuck off. It's obviously, it's it's a lot more like, you have a lot more right to be angry when they don't pay you. Like, you can kind of fight for your right to get paid and shit and you can kind of throw, like I do, throw the fucking race card at them, right? And get them all scared, right? But when they do pay you and they tell you to fuck off after an hour, that's like, that's like the the coldest coldest ever um review that you'd ever get of like no you're terrible get the fuck away from my club 
I don't want you anywhere in here anymore. I don't want you to play. No, you're wasting electricity. You're going to kill somebody in here with your shit selections. So can you imagine being at this level, optimal level, where you're playing at a club like Watergate, right? And by the time the, the, the next record, 90% of the audience had left the room. About 10 minutes later, the night manager came and said he was going to close the room. So they close your room because you're playing so bad. So obviously you'd imagine Optimum doesn't really have many good feelings about Watergate in general. But that kind of goes to show you why a club like Watergate was bound to eventually close before, you know, um, before it had to because of this type of like behavior even though maybe this was like previous management still this sort of behavior you know um treating people badly at the door um not really respecting people's you know um sexual orientations and whatever it may be your pronouns being very stuck in your own ways booking the same people again and again so i'm not surprised honestly honestly in my opinion i'm not surprised that it has closed because you know look at how they were treating fucking optima you know what I mean? <laughs> Telling them to fucking get off the decks and fuck off and shit. Absolutely crazy. But there's actually an interview here where the owner of Watergate actually speaks about why they're closed. So I want to quickly read that to you. This is courtesy of the newspaper Berliner. What's it called? Is it Berliner? Is it Zeitung? 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 How do you fucking pronounce that? Um, the title says, Interview on the Closure of Watergate. Berlin is now in this wish mode. So let's quickly read this. And again, this is translated from German to English, so please forgive me if it sounds a little bit fucked up. So the owner of Watergate is Ulrich Wombacher, right? So let's hear what Ulrich Wombacher has to say. So the question says here as follows. Watergate has been an institution in Berlin's nightlife for 22 years. DJ Mag has just named it one of the best 100 clubs in the world. <laughs> Yo, honestly, life can't get much worse than that, can you? You get named as one of the best 100 clubs in the world, and in that same year, you announce that you're closing forever. Fucking hell. Um, what happened? We're closing. Yes, we're closing. We're honoured to be one of the world's best clubs, but for us, the situation in Berlin is crucial. It has changed a lot after COVID. Business simply didn't pick up. You know, this is what I don't like. <clears throat> Again, I'm speaking from the outside looking in. I don't live there. I don't know anybody there. I'm just speaking from my own opinion and my own point of view of being there a few times and read between the lines. There's really no accountability from the owners about what they may have done that could have caused the closure of this amazing club. No accountability. Zero accountability. Zero accountability of what they could have possibly done that would have resulted in them having to close this legendary club and like i said it's legendary like even just where it's at like the venue the location is so unique from what is available especially in berlin nowadays everything's kind of like warehousey dark dungeon sort of vibes you know walker is one of the nicer looking clubs in berlin it's just a nice kind of social to picture as a tourist it's a nice place to kind of check out it's like i always tell people if they go if you go to berlin like don't don't have your heart always set on Bergheim. Try and go to the other places because they actually have a pretty good range of clubs and interiors and shit you can kind of check out and spaces in general. Like a Sisyphos, right, for instance, like a fucking RSO, uh, like a Trezor, um, you know, like a Club de Visionaire. All these places that are really unique where you wouldn't get to see them in any other place in the world. And I think Watergate is a good example of that, right? Right up by the river, amazing views, central location. Um, it's probably got a little bit more of a commercial kind of like you know booking policy but still um it's a real shame that it's gone you know really really a real shame and i'm sure it's going to in some ways affect maybe some of the tourism as well maybe going forward um so they said business didn't really pick up why not there are two sides to running a club there is what you see at night the light the glamour but there's also the number side covid was over we opened again and then came the war the energy crisis and inflation you celebrate the return and have to look at what you're actually celebrating at first there was a need to catch up which lasted for six or seven months then the year was over and it hit hard people just stayed away this i can kind of agree with him because i remember watching documentaries on like or reading articles on like ex berliner and shit and hearing people were legitimately suffering like the, i think the mental health of most berliners suffered well was affected badly during covid because a lot of their lives you know especially if you're young you'd imagine revolved around nightlife and covid completely decimated nightlife like nightlife was the last industry i think in most places to open when covid was kind of you know rampaging and shit so 
I'd imagine a lot of people were probably negative affected and probably just wanted to get as far away as possible from that scene and never probably came back. But I also think, especially here in London, again, Fabric being a good example, I fucking hate Fabric. I think it's a horrible place, but credit to Fabric, bro. They really did a good job, like I think post pandemic, really changing up their booking policy and whatever else it may be and making it very, making it a lot more um, appealing to this newer generation of people who are going out, uh, maybe highlighting and platforming some of the newer stars and giving them a platform and not just keep booking the same minimal tech house people who they kind of are known for. They could have easily done that, but I think that would have killed the club. The fact that Fabric decided to kind of, okay, cool, let's actually give some of these sex parties um, and king parties and LGBTQ queer sort of events a sort of shine, I think has allowed them to stay above um, water and shit. And I think if Watergate would have done that, they would have been fine too, but they didn't. They refused to sort of like embrace that side of things. And, you know, London's a good example of it. I think London nowadays, I think most people that go out can attest to it. The guys who are really running the scene now in terms of like putting on good club events are the gays, essentially. Everybody under the LGBTQ banner are the ones that are killing it. So if you're not in tune with them, if you're not fucking working with them and, you know, whatever, you're, you're done. So the nights of like, you know, the, the times are just booking the same old top 10 DJs that get listed on fucking DJ Mag is done. That's not going to work anymore. You have to kind of be plugged in with the people who are really moving and shaking things in Wargate for whatever reason refuse to do it and now they're closing it and they're probably going to turn it into a co-working space. Fucking annoying. Uh, people look for other things to do during COVID. What's up? Yeah, people look for a lot of things to do during COVID. Um, music is consumed differently. Uh, digital has taken an extremely big step the average clubber goes out three for four years then they finish their studies or whatever and next generation comes along generational drums are quick in business two or three two and a half years of closed clubs makes a difference yeah that's true that's actually a good point to be fair maybe some of the people that were going to maybe a big portion of their customer base did just leave and grow up that could be a problem another one says do you think that because of corona generation has not been socializing clubs at all he answers and says they slipped into a time when people said that going out and being together in a confined space was not popular that you shouldn't do it and some of the older generation may have seen it as a welcome opportunity to say goodbye to nightlife and because of inflation people have less money the previously criticized cheap tourism no longer existed the airlines cancelled a series of routes to ber and because there's now a greater sensitivity about short-haul flights people prefer to stay at home and ride their bikes not a good club that's not that's not good for a club that is previously a magnet for people all over Europe. I think there's also maybe, if I was speaking for myself, for my own personal experience, for my own personal experience, I think one of the main reasons why I don't even go to Berlin as much as I did in the past is to do with the accommodation cost. The flights are still pretty good. Like I saw a flight recently that I was eyeing up to go to Berlin, Wednesday to Wednesday. And it's like ninety dollars or something, ninety pounds. But the accommodation in Berlin now, especially Airbnb wise, is so expensive. Hotels, I guess, whatever you know. But if you don't, if you like, pref which I usually do, would prefer to go stay like an Airbnb sort of location somewhere where you can kind of you know have the kind of you know a one bed apartment or whatever to yourself and shit. That sort of stuff is so crazy now and it's with good reason because i think berlin to be fair as a city did a really good job in terms of clamping down on people because i think at the time people took the piss a lot of people were basically renting properties in berlin people that didn't even live there were renting properties and then were renting them properties that they rented on airbnb and then obviously making tons of money on it but then they were taking up properties so people that lived there couldn't get spaces and i think there's obviously a shortage of property there overall so berlin in, in you know basically put this rule in which i think a lot of countries in europe have where you could only own a property if you're the resident there blah 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 which basically made it hard for people to kind of you know um, do that whole airbnb hustle which i think affected techno tourism way more in my opinion it affected techno tourism way 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 more than just a you know lack of flights coming in and out and shit because i feel like with that it then put a lot more kind of onus on people going to hotels and you know hotels they always kind of react to you know the demands and shit what's going on so they hiked up their prices so now across the board it's probably not as cost effective as probably it was as it once was in the past to jump on a plane and quickly go to a place like berlin and shit but I'm, i don't even know if that's even true because i feel like all my mates are still going to ibifa 
you know all my quote-unquote normie mates are still going to ibiza every fucking year like especially post covid they all went so i don't really know if that's true like i don't think the ibiza i don't know maybe i'm mistaken maybe i don't know what i'm talking about maybe the ibiza numbers are down from what they were previously but i feel like the pictures that i've seen of dc10 and shit it's still fucking wall-to-wall full of fucking people full of fucking Rondelez just chilling you know what i mean gurning from left to right and shit so i'm not too sure if that's a, a good enough excuse but anyway what what do i know it continues what proportion of tourists make up watergate he says on a good weekend 50 to 60 to 70 percent that's probably not a good thing is it if you're in a city like berlin that's known for techno that's known for dance music electronic music nightlife nightclubs you probably shouldn't be happy if your clientele is made up to 70 percent of tourists you shouldn't be happy about that because they t- you'd imagine they're not going to be your they're not going to be the ones keeping the lights on because the people that live there are going to be the ones keeping the lights on you'd imagine i don't know maybe i'm not maybe, maybe i'm mistaken i'd imagine i'd imagine Ber- Bergen is probably half maybe Bergen might be 60 percent tourist or 50 but if you if you have 70 percent of your punters being tourists that's not a good thing because when this is when it's a slow season that club must be completely empty like legitimately empty fuck you now it continues berlin's myth is based on club culture is something changing there he says yeah berlin is individual small and established club culture has lost international relevance it can no longer keep up with the fees either yes berlin is unique in the mix of it offers there's the watergate there's renate there's Berghain, there's else rso about blank you go from here to there and can experience the city the way you way um that way i can't find that anywhere else nevertheless it used to be really important for every artist to play in a club in berlin even for a small fee nowadays it's being skipped club culture mm, that's not true he's waffling here people aren't skipping berlin for that mate if anything people are just going to other clubs i think the the rule that they have if i'm not mistaken they've got this weird rule i'm not sure if you if, if you've seen it but there's this weird rule where you're basically not allowed to play in other venues like if, if you get booked at one of the big main venues i think there's like a two week sort of like block so you can't play a week on either side of that date so essentially they, they kind of have like an exclusivity deal so i think that kind of maybe sometimes negative affects places but i don't think people are skipping berlin i don't think that's the case they still got some of the best clubs out there and some of the best lineups you know going so i don't think that's going to be the case honestly like come on let's be real let's be flipping real um let's continue what is important now um today people stage themselves on social media and end up on the big stages for example at festivals without the springboard of a club at paul kalkenbrunner's show at the weekend twenty thousand people were at the whatever that place is and they all bought a ticket the goal is no longer to make it watergate or to Bergheim. this was already always all, this was always already apparent before corona when the festival culture became so big people in clubs noticed that summer is no longer quite so strong if you go to a festival you won't be in a club for at least three weeks okay good point but attractiveness should be um refined redefined sort after covid but that didn't happen that's how it is when you're doing well you don't do anything and when you're doing badly you think if only you had and berlin is in its is in the in this if this only had mode because when all the tourism glam goes away what is left to the strip down berlin and this here area in kreuzberg in particular has lost a lot of its shine so I think he's making a good point here, but I think overall he's also kind of missing the point because I feel like on one point, on one side, maybe now there is a lot more like, there is a lot more, um, from the outside looking in, I feel like Berlin's a lot more spread out now. And I feel like everybody is wanking over Bergheim as much as I do. I think most people that live there go to other places across the board whether they go to forest raves, underground, actual underground raves, other venues. I don't think Bergheim is the only place to go, especially with some people maybe being a little bit more um, politically inclined and think and not really vibing with Bergheim because of their stance or lack of, you know, comment about the whole um, Gaza situation at the moment. So I think that a lot of people now are starting to go to and making an effort to go to other places. Good example being RSO. I feel like RSO in the last 18 months has really picked up 
they're selling out big events they've got a lot of big promoters there now they've got a lot of big djs playing now i think um if i'm not mistaken didn't freddie k play there recently else is another one as well they've got a lot of big events happening there as well big collective big djs playing their big labels doing their events there as well so if, to me it feels like if ever there was an opportunity or ever there was a chance now you have more of a chance now to be a success as a club in berlin because everyone now is open to other places they're not just like dead set on their one place even like even like a club also is another example so there's more there's more competition but there's more willingness from the punters to try other places and not just be stuck to the same old trezor <coughs> burger and type of vibe so i feel like it, it works on that side but he does make a good point about festivals i feel like now there's probably more festivals than there's ever been and there's really and festivals i feel like nowadays if you're being cost effective they're probably more bang for your buck than going out on a weekend because you get to see way more people over the four days and you pay less to see them you know and usually depending it can be a funner time especially if you go abroad and if you live in germany or if you you know live in berlin um they have some of the best festivals you know in europe some of the best festivals exist in europe so you're only like a train ride away to visit some of these cool places so yeah maybe that's also affecting them but i don't know it sounds like an excuse but yeah look look how look how beautiful it is again like if you've if you've ever been to berlin you'll know most clubs in there are just fucking warehouses and loads of exposed brick and shit and very industrial vibe so it is quite nice to go to a nightclub that just looks nice you know like <laughs> this is probably why multi-sex is there because this looks like a quote-unquote sexy club it looks a little bit more like you know refined and chic and shit so it's quite a nice mix-up from what you usually get when you go to berlin so it's a real shame that it's gone i'm not gonna lie it's a real fucking shame that it's gone um what do you think the drug scene the homelessness the dirt the impoverishment berlin can no longer rest on its laurels for being poor and sexy because poor and sexy doesn't look so cool out there anymore again i think he's missing the point I, poor and sexy has never been better poor and sexy has never been bigger um there's not so much there's not much that it's sexy anymore it's a total horror film berlin especially kreuzberg has lost a lot of its charm kreuzberg at least in its former 36 has a real drug problem a lot of homelessness crime and other visible social problems when club tourism and partying disappear this will become even more obvious i think this is the reason why they're closing man i think he just doesn't like <laughs> what the scene is this is the scene like this is what it is <laughs> it's people raving amongst you know the fucking destruction of their own fucking societies and shit and their locales you know what i mean we're raving having a good time waving our hands in the air while there's literal people outside sleeping in cardboard boxes and shit you know what i mean cost of living has gone through the roof and stuff and some of us are just trying to you know pretend it's not happening by drowning and drugging up our sorrows this is exactly what the scene is exactly what it is you just have to kind of rave and shuffle and fucking techno stomp out of it that's all you have to do and i think he's probably hoping that something else happens but this is kind of the scene this is exactly what it is it continues and uh ba bauma whatever that is those are the ghosts that what's that what's that what's that? how do you even pronounce that word honestly german is fucking crazy bala baller man falkenstein Strasse big up everybody that lives in berlin who's not from there and has learned german you are a fucking g whoever you are you're a g because that language is wow um so and uh ballerman falken stein Strasser. those are the ghosts that we have partly summoned ourselves if we close our doors the spatty the local kebab shop the fred from the currywurst stand on the corner we will still will see a drop in sales oh that's true isn't it that's very very fucking true but the decline in tourism is already noticeable everywhere that is clearly one of the reasons why things are worse in berlin i experienced a time when berlin had no tourism at the vf w m b f w m f in the 90s we were happy if 500 people came with tourism boom that began in the 90s people got used to twice as many basically the situation is now normalized and everything except that we now know that a lot of clubs that were all maintained during covid period now have to share the small cake okay 
that's a very good point though like when clubs close around there there is an entire i think it's, it's similar to every metropolitan city it's the same here in london um clubs kind of you know they kind of create their own little ecosystem around them so even a club like fold even though i would imagine those those off licenses around fold are quite far i'd imagine ever since fold opened i'd imagine that there's an off license near Carrington station if you know you know on barking road actually that's open 24 hours i'd imagine they've probably seen an uptick in people coming in and buying shit um so now that falls open it's probably improved their business same goes for the mcdonald's around the corner so same goes for i guess berlin uh, clubs you know everything around the club kind of you know kind of um benefits from the club being successful because everybody kind of goes to a local spatty to kind of buy something to drink perhaps shots something to eat blah 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 so yeah is everyone using their elbows now there are no fights over distribution in berlin there's friendly atmosphere we speak with openly with another why is Watergate closing now when the problems affect everybody that's the good question good question journalists why is Watergate closing now when the problems affect everybody we in this prominent location right by the um Oberbaum bridge are among the first to feel these changes nothing lasts forever the Berlin corner pubs are also gone, but for a long time we fought in our self-perception self and our enthusiasm that we were in irreplaceable. We were something like Edeka. We have always been there for the people who come to us now. We were there when they were born, even their mothers were with us. They can't imagine us closing, but why shouldn't also be a temporary phenomenon? Club culture is incredibly fragile. That's actually true. Um, there is something quite poetic about a club closing or about you being able to end something i think that's one of the reasons why i sort of fell in love with like japanese streetwear people like nigo and john takahashi and hiroshi fujiwara were, were well known for like starting little brands and then just like ending them like having a little brand having it run for a few seasons stopping it and then just changing it to another brand renaming it or relaunching something else so it kind of made whatever you bought at that time very sacred very limited right very special um but it was also kind of a way to kind of keep yourself fresh and kind of keep challenging and pushing yourself as a designer and obviously pushing the customers and i think there's something kind of cool about that with clubs where like hey i went to this club at this one time it doesn't exist anymore it's not it's not around anymore um so there's probably something quite cool about that but i think they could have if they were able to keep up with the times i think they could have stayed stayed open personally um, but it continues if you look at london new york how does berlin compare in the uk clubs are dying out there's no life extending support from politicians that's true 100 percent. it is radical when there is no more money the clubs closes people who were envious of us internationally for getting through covid ultimately however it only shifted the problem backwards in london promoters and club goers got used to the tough economic struggle for distribution very early on the Berlin club scene, which is comparatively wrapped in cotton wool, has fought more and more about the cultural basis of the work. Its emphasis will change. Its issue of rent, the questions of right location and competition all have been included. That's actually a really good point. That's actually a really fucking good point that he's saying here. Maybe in London, even though I complain about the scene, maybe the fact that promoters and clubs have to deal or have to work in such horrible conditions conditions that basically aren't tenable in any other place you have to make what you have to make out of it you have to make the good out of fucking bad situation we're used to that but places like berlin they're spoiled and they don't know how to basically you know get their hands dirty they don't know how to kind of figure shit out when their backs are against the wall because they're so used to the good times being the good times forever and ever and maybe COVID was the first time they experienced hard times and didn't know how to react or to adapt to keep their business going so maybe that there's a lot of good points there um and then that is it i think speaking of rent you have the same landlord as club renata which is closing in the 2025 could you also stay in premises we negotiated and received an offer but decided not to sign okay so they did receive an offer but it was too much i guess the rent um, yeah, I don't blame them. Imagine if they, if they decide to renew your lease, but only if you pay double what you're paying already. Like that's just that's crazy, and you're already struggling as well. So it makes no sense. Does that have something to do with the amount of rent that you would have paid? So it's always has something to do with that. But we didn't make the decision just because of the rent. Yes, people are queuing up at the door, but I can see the signs of the horizon as a visionary. And as we once were, when we opened the water gear at this spot, we are perhaps just as visionary now, saying it's time for us to say goodbye. You're a veteran of the club scene. How do you personally feel about the decision? It's fine. 
I'm fine, sorry. I've seen 22 great years. I'm very grateful. And at 50, it's easier for me to move on. But there are people in their 20s in the city who want to build something and for whom the loss of the location at Watergate will be disastrous. Maybe it's time to go back to the underground, temporary uses, all the things we fought our way out of. It's no use us shipping everything to whatever that place is because everything in the city center is monetized. But the things that attract the masses, the things that make it possible to run a place like this, which creates long queues and glamour, all the things that the city was so fond of and adoring itself that will shrink that's actually a really good point maybe that that will inspire the kids now to start doing it because that's something you don't really see again maybe as an outsider I, i'm not meant to know but i feel like berlin doesn't really have a lot of underground clubs anyway there's no such thing anymore i don't, don't feel like that, that even exists um i think the last time i went to something that was underground was like i don't know maybe 2018 2017 I can't remember the name of the club, but it was like a it had like a metal logo. It was in like a built I forgot where it was, but it was like a it was like a temporary club space. And that was the last time I went to anything that was kind of underground. Nowadays everything is like a legit club, so hey, what can you do? Underground temporary uses, that wasn't much the worst thing. Um underground temporary use, that wasn't the worst thing, but these open spaces don't exist anymore. At least not in the center. That's another good point. Not uh we went in somewhere, set up a system and that was it. But you can't do that anymore today. And obviously that's the that's the LED light show um or installation inside of Watergate. Again, it's a really sad time to be fair. Um obviously they treat people terribly over the years and maybe they have a lot to blame for them closing but again just as an institution as a place to go it is a sad thing that Bur um, Watergate is closing but again maybe they have a lot of their own to blame about the situation so they can't really look at anybody else but themselves who knows <gasps> who fucking knows